Welcome to Inside the Set with Set Decor. Inside the Set is a series that focuses on the design and decor of stories that excite us and ignite our imaginations. When we get to discuss the collaborations between production designers and set decorators and get to hear firsthand accounts of how these works of art came to be. From their inception, ideas on a page, to completion where we get to sit in the dark and experience them collectively. Welcome to Inside the Set. And we're here today with Sarah Greenwood, production designer, and Katie Spencer, who's a fabulous SCSA member and set decorator. And we're here to discuss the fabulous film Cyrano. So welcome, ladies. Hello. Hi. Hi. So great to see you. Thank I you. just thrilled. Um, I just loved, loved, loved the film. It was just sumptuous, as all of your work always is. Um, and I'd like to start with just a little bit of background, if you give a little thumbnail of how you uh, came to be the fabulous team that you are, how you got started, and how you met. Off you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it's, I mean, we've worked together now for so long. I think it's is it over 20 years. I think it must be nearly 20 years. And, well, okay, I think it must be nearly 10 <laughs> years. No, it's 20 years. And uh, we actually, we have a similar background from theatre, but we actually met um, at the BBC uh, a long time ago. Um, back in the days, it's slightly different thing. I was a production buyer then. Sarah was a, a, still a designer. Um, <laughs> going backwards. Going backwards. No, no, still a designer. And uh, we got, we sort of, the first show we did together was After, After Miss Julie. Julie, which was a, a later, it was Patrick Marbury written a sort of Between the Wars version of Strindberg's Miss Julie. And uh, like sort of lots of good partnerships, we got to, we were sort of thrown together because somebody uh, wasn't available to work with Dominic, wasn't it? It wasn't available. Um, and so it sort of just clicked from then on in really. And um, I think every show feels so you don't know any, you don't know any better. <laughs> no, I, I I've had the uh, I've had the pleasure of working with only Katie, whereas Katie has the occasional pleasure of oh, working. No, with not other pleasure. People. Yeah. <laughs> um, no. So uh, yes, I mean it's um, I don't know. It's just this kind of like it, it roll it roll it rolls on, and you know we build on things we know and on each other's strengths and our shorthand mm -hmm. and you know, our kind of knowledge and also our challenges to each other. So Katie certainly challenges me, you know, and it's kind of like, you know, it's this finger wagging, oh, it's boring, you know, so it's kind of <laughs> I like- I think I ever do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, I think it's good. We keep each other yeah. on our toes. And, and I think now, you know, we're so much, it's, it's interesting because we're so much accepted as a, you know, as a package that, you know, quite often, you know, in the past productions would say, why do you need a set decorator on at this point? And it's like, well, no, because it's more than that. And, you know, our, our, our working methodology and relationship is more than that. It's, it's, it's not as simple as, you know, this responsibility is Katie's and this is mine. It's a kind of completely blended thing. And I think to try and disentangle it at this point would just be... Yeah. No, it seems to be somehow it works and, and, and you know, Jan, it's like a shorthand when you have with people as, as time becomes more precious and money becomes tighter and then, you know, you get the added bonus of COVID, mm. um, everything becomes just so much more um, pressured and restrictive. It's good to have like all through the team, um, you know, a second hand with people you know and trust really. Yeah. I mean, that's true. It's interesting. It's, it's kind of, it doesn't make you... It doesn't make you go out of your comfort zone, particularly this time and pressure and money and COVID. It kind of makes you want to kind of knuckle down and just, you know, uh, so it's not, it doesn't feel like a time for expansiveness or mm. kind of, you know, pushing the boundaries really. So uh, yeah, but it's a pleasure as ever, Casey. It, it's always a pleasure. <laughs> it's always a pleasure, never a yeah, chore. Yeah, yeah. Along with your, your relationship the two of you together you also have a long-standing relationship with joe wright and and often with seamus mcgarvey our the the dp so if you could speak a little bit about uh, that other shorthand that you have with the director yes i mean again and it's interesting because we heard a, an interview that joe did a, 
recently on about Serrano and he's talking about uh He's talking about his collaborators and things, and you know, again, it's like you know, it's Katie, Katie and I get mentioned in the in the same breath. It's like you know how 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 strongly he, his regard for us, but equally our regard for him. As much as we you know curse him, as Katie reminds me, when we're when we're actually in it and in the thick of it, you know, blimey, does he get cursed? But you know, he is the most amazing and generous and. You know, a thoughtful person to work with. He's 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 Great. he's so he's so brilliant. He's so brilliant. He doesn't stop things. He just lets things move and grow and roll. And you build and you build. And then you know, one of us, as ever, will come out with a really bad idea. And and we're not afraid to say, oh my god, you're joking or whatever or brilliant. And then it'll get better and better and better and better. You know, just the way you build on something. And so again, it's that whole thing of who does what, well, we, you know, you just don't know where the ideas come from, um, how the ideas develop. It, there's no, there's no, there's no, it's not a linear process. And then of course, Seamus, I mean, my, 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 my feeling about Seamus is that he's such a, he's such an eloquent artist. You know, he's, he is so brilliant that, you know, whatever ideas you have when you're in prep and developing stuff, put it in Seamus and Joe's hand at that point and it just blossoms and it always turns out to be you know 10 times more than it I ever envisaged it and that's what I feel when I look at you know I look at the footage and look at the rushes and then you look at the cuts and the final cut and you just go wow you know what you pulled out of what we did mm -hmm. and what we gave them is just it's just phenomenal really so it's interesting it's also it's a level of trust mm. it, it, which you build which you build up and you think, oh, okay, I'm not quite sure. Usually it's whatever I'm saying. People go, I'm not quite sure what you're talking about, but um, if you want to give it a go, and do you know what I mean? It's that mm. level of trust. And then mm. it's like you say, it will, um, it will take, they will take it to some level you yeah. can never dream of. Yeah. We should also mention Jacqueline, the costume designer. Yes. Because she did do um, Haley's costumes on this as well. She's another sort of key. Yeah, cause, yeah. collaborator. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, yeah, so she did Roxanne's costumes and Ma Massimo, he did the rest of the costumes, but he very much kind of followed uh, in Joe and Jacqueline's kind of, you know, the, the, there's a feel about them that it felt they were so much part of it, you know, so, um, you know, what he did, I thought was a, a so beautiful, you know, and the layers of the layers of the class structure that he, you know, in that was illustrated by the kinds of costumes was just brilliant, but Joe, you know, Joe's a lot to do with that. And also Joe is a lot to do with, he learns very quickly, Joe. And mm -hmm. you can see that he's learned a lot from Jacqueline. I saw an interview with he and Seamus and they both spoke about how emotional this story is. And that really comes through. And it's, I think that it, a lot of it starts with your relationships, you know, that you all trust your instincts and, and you, you're you're all woven together your instincts and it's just fantastic um i want to ask sarah how on earth did you end up choosing sicily how did did you just like fly around the world and find the right spot if only <laughs> i mean you, we do fly around the world and you're always putting stuff in your back pocket for later it's kind of oh, okay so in fact, we were in Sicily about three years ago in 2019, I think, or something like that, um, uh, scouting for Beautiful Ruins, which is an, another fantastic book, um, a fantastic film that, that um, unfortunately so far it hasn't been made. But we did have the most amazing six weeks going down the Amalfi Coast, through uh, Liguria, then down to Capri and over to Sicily. And when we were on the Amalfi Coast, we went to we went to somewhere actually that we'd shot on for a Chanel commercial with Joe. We went there, Joe wasn't directing this film. So we went there to, for, to recce it. And um, we were talking to the owner and he said, oh, you know, oh, you're going to Sicily. Oh, you must go to my friend has a cannoli shop in a town called Noto. Okay. Pack that away. So we head down to Sicily. And in fact, we were looking for coastal places in Sicily. And, and then our location manager said, oh, we're, we're not far from Noto. Do you want to go and have a cannoli? <laughs> it's like, yeah, let's go and have a cannoli. And that was it. We arrived in Noto. And I mean, I knew that Southern Sicily was an amazing Baroque, you know, for, for its Baroque architecture. It was for not it was second to none. 
I knew all about that, but I never in a million years thought that there was going to be a place like Noto, which is an, in fact uh, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, and the whole center of this, the town is Baroque, literally. And, and the reason, and it's just kind of virtually untouched. It's kind of, um, what, what happened was there was a, a, a terrible earthquake in, in Sicily in 1690. And in 1692, they started to rebuild, you know, and, um, and there it is, and it still stands. And in the way of, you know, Italian architecture anyway, it was not over renovated through lack of money. It's not been built over or knocked down because it was an impoverished part of Sicily, you know, so it's there. And it was just like, my goodness, just looking at this place everywhere you looked. So we had our cannolis, we took lots of photographs and we moved on. <laughs> and, very and hot. It was very, very hot. It was like 90 degrees. And so, it, so then we moved on. And when we came back at some point, I showed these photos to Joe, you know, just say, you know, this is an amazing place. And he said, well, if we ever do Serrano, we're going to go and do it in Noto. And that was it. So that little seed was just in there. And then lo and behold, you know, two, three years later, he says, remember that, that nice town in Sicily, you know? And um, so, yeah, so the, the trip that Katie talks about was when we, uh, we just went back there in the vain hope that it was as wonderful as we remembered. So it was, so yeah, there we were, it was, thankfully yeah. it was, yeah. yeah. The bakery, the scene where they're kneading the dough and they're doing the sort of ballet, what were the bones of that and how much did you have to adjust that that set because it was it was just phenomenal all the i i mean everywhere the archways that lined up everywhere and but that scene in particular was so emotional you know it was it, it's actually the whole bakery sequence is one of my favorite sequences throughout the film because there's 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 many ways i think it sort of played and it worked i think just for, for we're starting off in in Ragano in, in the shop to begin with it had to be sort of like a a through narrative throughout the bakery all the way to that big sort of emotional scene between Serrano and Roxanne where he's living in filled with hope and uh, so to begin with because it's all about soldiers and army and we couldn't afford soldiers and army to a huge extent so we thought what can we do here so we'll make them out of gingerbread um, <laughs> and we'll put them in the bakery and we'll make it like a garrison town. So it looks like they're celebrating their army like it was a Jubilee or Independence Day or something like that. Um, uh, and to try and make it not look like a French patisserie, but to make it look like a local. So, I mean, that was, that was, that was fun. So we had to design all the sort of the biscuits and the gingerbread and the pie so they looked like our uniforms. And then we found this amazing baker on the island who then got COVID and couldn't do it. <laughs> so we had to find another baker. So some of the soldiers are a little bit tubby <laughs> and a little bit Pillsbury Doughboy, but they hopefully were hidden out of the way. Um, and then you go, you go through, and here I think also Sidi Larby, who was the choreographer on this, um, who was also the choreographer on um, uh, Anna Karenina we did with Joe. So it's, it's, this is not like a, a, a standard musical. It's like a musical with, with um, movement and songs that are like poetry. And I love the songs because they're not your normal sort of big sort of musical numbers. Actually, the, but the funniest thing about that was jumping in. So you know, when they're all around the table, and they're doing all of this. Mm. So they, they started... They started rehearsing back in Amsterdam or Antwerp, Antwerp yeah. way before we'd, you know, found and figured mm -hmm. out how we we're going to do it. And they were, um, Joe said, oh, look at this amazing video of the, the dancers in the bakery. And we watched it and it was just like huge. It was like a hundred foot square, very yeah. expressive, moving all over the place. And we just said, uh, uh it's not going to be like that. Uh, they thought they were dancing on a stage. Yeah, yeah. They? But, but you know, that just shows how brilliant yeah. City Larby is and yeah. all the dancers yeah. because they just go, okay, we'll just take a few steps out of here yeah. and take a few steps. Uh, and and the national yeah. And, yeah. and the lyrics yeah. and yeah, and yeah. all of that because yeah. it really is just a song about love yeah. and poetry and yeah. you know they're sort of falling in love. One of the remits, one of the things that Joe was told by. Uh, Eric Feltner, the, the producer, the main main um, working title producer, he said, yeah, okay, 
when he was finally persuaded that we could make this film in Soho, in Soho, in Sicily during, yeah. during COVID, one of the things he said was, well, you've got to actually shoot it with a core group in one place. Yes, said Joe, we'll do that. And so one of the things was, we would find all of our hero sets um, in the town of Noto. You know, so we, we explored everywhere. We were given the keys to the city by the, by the mayor and the town. They were so helpful, so lovely. And they said, okay, off you go. And we literally, we went everywhere. And so it's a case of finding places and, and figuring out what we can do to make them work. And that was certainly how we did the bakery, you know, the upstairs, the downstairs and all of that. And, and, you know, making things work in real time. It was very pragmatic. And you know how wonderful it is actually to have limitations on you. So here's your limitations, be it time or money or space. This is what you've got. You're gonna make it work. And that was very much the approach to this. Yeah, I mean, helped by the fact that you, everywhere you looked in Noto, it was beautiful, but you know, it was, it was like, okay, so we're gonna make this work. And in fact, you know, um, it then just becomes, it becomes so believable because you're making the spaces work for you and, you know, building in this and that and whatever, but, you know, it, it's a lot of it's, a lot of it's there. And I'm also helped by the fact that you have the most amazing palazzo owners who will let you do certain amount what you cover want. the whole courtyard with in flower. with flowers. Well, it wasn't that. flower, was it? No, a flower substitute. Yeah. I, I was so moved by the colors of the town. The streets were so almost monochrome, I guess. And then when the costumes and her red, gorgeous red hair, it just popped so much. And the fruit stands that you did, Katie, and just the whole thing, it was just such a wonderful juxtaposition. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, what, what was interesting about the town was that um, it, it you know, the color of the stone is amazing because it absorbs whatever time of day it is, you know, so it's like a jewel, it just glows. And, you know, it starts off in the morning, it's almost white in the, in the dawn light. And then as it's kind of, it goes this beautiful pink color. And it's just, it's just kind of a, a phenomenal kind of um, range that it gives you, even though it is monochromatic. And I think that was one of the things, that was one of the things that first hit me when, when we were there and I saw some monks walking down the road and the monks were the same color as the walls. And I just thought that this is just mm. this is just amazing, mm. you know. And and so that's why Joe made the cut the the uniforms the, the the color of the walls, you know. And and it's just this it's just this natural palette that comes out of it. And you know that was our that was our thing, you know. When they kept saying, okay, you know, I think we built about hundred and fifty pairs of shutters, and we had all those fabric blinds oh, and things. And we had so many blinds. Yeah, there was a lot of you know adding to yeah. it rather yeah. than you know Co covering, covering up, up and, and adding to it. Yeah. And and it was like you know it was like well what color do you want this? Well here's <laughs> I mean, it was like in a funny kind of way, it was like just trying to hold back and 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 being restrained, mm. which is not usual for us, and and it certainly kind of I think it completely worked for the town, and then. And then, you know, for the theatre, which is a different beast, again, it, it was marrying it in with the palette of the, of the place. The beautiful reds and the terracotta, so it wasn't red, red. Joe wanted it red and green because they're the colour of witches. You know, so the red and the green, you know, is the terracotta of the, of the, of the tiles and the green is the, you know, is the beautiful colour of all the palm trees and all the plants and the yuccas and... You know, so that was our palette. Yeah. It's all, it was all there to be had, you know, and then when you have the most amazing, and Katie will talk about, you know, all, all of the prop makers and things, but, you know, we just had the best painters in the world, uh, you know, Italian. Italian painters, although she works in America, actually, Christina Cicli. It, it, you know, once, you know, I knew I had her on board and, you know, you designed to their strengths and that's what we did, so. Yeah, it was it was just incredible. But and I also want to, since you're, we're talking about the exterior and adding all the shutters and the fabulous awnings and how did you hide the 21st century? If you look closely, you'll see it's, it's quite often a wash day in Noto. Um, 
There's a lot of washing. There's a lot of shutters. And they don't take their sheets in And at they night, never do they? take their sheets in <laughs> in the evening. And um, they do like an awning uh, yeah. for the sun. Yeah. Um, and uh, or a shutter to go over oh, they there. They do like a shutter windows. and an awning yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And but also you built things, Sarah. You yeah. built the archway. You know the you know the major things. I mean, it's it's such an architectural gem that you kind of um, uh, yeah, kind of. Uh, you, 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 you can't go wrong. If you need a reference, you just go out and you go, okay, we'll have one of those. Yeah. Or we'll have one of those, yeah. you know? So, um, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's negative design, isn't it? It's, 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 you know, you, you end up head scratching saying, well, what are we going to do about that? Because we can't just leave it and we have to do something. And it's like, you know, yeah, it's like a hot potato. It flips between art department and set deck. Well, you find something or you yeah. find something. Yeah, there's a case in point. There were really horrible windows uh, behind all those shutters, yeah. you know, but it's quite straightforward. And, yeah. and you see the drain pipe, the drain pipe behind Peter's head. Yeah. That's one of these amazing, they're yeah. like palm trees. You build them up in terracotta. Uh, so that's there hiding a modern drain pipe. But it is negative design because you don't even know it's there. And you know, this is all graffitied behind, yeah. so that was all covered. You yeah. know, things like that. So you had to get kind of a historic yeah. painter to come and paint it. And obviously, we built that church. Yeah. Uh, all of yeah. No, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no. But you can see, look how pink it is there. Isn't that amazing? It's such a great color. Now, I you mentioned briefly the theater, which is really needs to be addressed. It was just stunning. The layers of of the proscenium and uh, I understand that you built that in the hotel courtyard. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. In fact, in Noto, there is a, a very pretty kind of 18th century theater which is actually built in the 19th century, but as an 18th century theater. And, you know, every producer on the land will say, why are you not shooting in the theater that's in there? <laughs> but, you know, it was red and it was quite formal and it was very 18th century, you know, not what we were after. Joe wanted something much more robust and Baroque basically, and more in keeping for, with the period. So that's why we ended up building it. But we also, uh, it was because of COVID in fact, um, you know, it was everybody's getting very worried. The numbers were up and all of that. Everybody's getting very worried. And, you know, it was like, well, let's build it outside. And it was like, OK, hang on, guys. Um, and, you know, <laughs> this was in October, November. And so they bought it forward five, five weeks. Um, and and, you know, in in Sicily, in October, November, you do get big storms. <laughs> We had no wet weather cover, you know, it was just like, we just stumbled on and carried on and, you know, everything that could have come down on us could have come down, did come down on us, like rain and, you know, but, but that's the main, that's the reason. So we, so, you know, we built it in that courtyard. There's an incredible slope, which is a great rake. So it kind of worked visually, but to have people walking on and for us to build on um, was very difficult, but you know, as you could see, it was it's all built out, built out of wood. There's no scaffolding in it at all, you know, and it's all self-supporting. Um, and we waited five weeks for that set to turn up from Rome and then finally it did and finally it went up like like that, but it was very stressful. Fair, yeah, it was all night shooting as well. Yeah. Night for night, because obviously we were outside. How many candles you went through? Oh, I can't tell you. There was a very funny thing in the theatre, actually, because all those chandeliers, okay, so we made oil candles because you don't want to be, they have to, you know, survive. it's the real flame and yeah. you don't have to change them as often and all of that. So we thought, okay, we've we've done chandeliers before. We know what we're on here. We're going to make the oil candles. We're going to do that. The boys only have to winch them down every three hours, change them. What could possibly go wrong, Jan? <laughs> those storms, do you know, the wild Sicilian so storms? They're there filming in the middle of the night. We've gone, right, it's about three o'clock. We wake up to these messages and uh, saying, what has happened? All the oil in the candle, the old candle has started to melt, right? And it's starting to drip on all the people extras underneath. Why, why has this happened? Mm. Right, so we're in like complete, don't worry, we'll sort it by tonight. tonight's shooting and, um, in complete sort of panic mode, you know, the brilliant makers and everything, so we're all there. How can this happen? Why have you melted? And it was the direction of the wind was so fierce 
it had melted, the flame had melted all the plastic. But then we got the, this is a top tip, if it ever happens, top tip. All we needed to do in the end is put a little washer on oh. top of the cap. That's it. Yeah. That's all you need to do. If you're ever doing um, oil 240 candles. oil candles outside, <laughs> that will candles in the encyclopedia of how to. <laughs> yeah, of yeah. how to, yeah, top tip. Yeah. Oh my God, that's incredible. So, was it all oil candles everywhere? Or no, did you... oil candles up above huh. um, in the chandeliers, and then it was uh, real candles everywhere else that you could reach that you could reach and exactly. then with, with the footlights in the theater i mean Seamus is very clever and we had a very clever practical electrician there would be bulbs on one side and then we, we made candles with bulbs inside the candle for, for Seamus and things like that and then sometimes they were real so it was a, a real candle plot how did you get materials there i mean was it all shipped in containers or did you set up a shop there yeah, there was a, the shop. Mainly, it was there. Basically, I mean, you did have some something. Some things came from Con Rome. Construction was kind of started in Rome and finished on location. Mm -hmm. We did no studio work. It was all builds into location. Uh, so it's in a way that you'd work out of town. You know, you just set up a workshop in the local farmyard. In this case, and you set we up. We had yeah, we had great sort of drapesmen and yeah. you know, uh, there's a lot of drapes on this and great fantastic makers. Um, you know, some Italian uh, and some um, that uh, we, we, we knew when we, we brought from the UK. And it was, I think it was harmonious. It was the it? most harmonious making team, do you know, and and dressing team. Because again, it was the core, a few from the UK, only like four from the UK and what you'd call your lead man and and, uh, uh, and, lo and locals from Rome and from Sicily and they were an absolute delight and so necessary because of the way, especially when we went on to uh, Etna and uh, had to sort of dress at the top of Etna in the snow. Oh, look at that. As you can see, that's Etna rumbling away, which, which she did the whole time we were there. And I'm not joking, the smell of sulfur was extreme. Lord. Then it started to snow, right? And this is us on the first set, which we didn't okay. end up on. Yeah, so we ended up, <clears throat> you see the, the volcano in the background, there's lots of craters. That's the one that exploded on us at the end, um, which is in fact, that's where we had to move the set to with the- So we were up there. We were up there and then we went down. So basically it started to snow and they did assure us that it never snowed on Etna till after Christmas, but of course it snowed. So in the end we had to move, yeah, we had to move down. Um, to this other to this other area which is here where there was less snow but the snow, kind of the snow followed us down the mountain and what happened here was that because we're so close to the magma underneath that in the morning it would be like this and by the afternoon all the snow had melted because the ground was hot so the continuity was you know and, and we didn't have the time or the money to get snow business out there and so it was very tricky kind of continuity wise and and um, what we did is... And, and I would say that is the hardest dress yeah. that we've ever done because uh, the altitude was so difficult to work in and... Uh, the cold. The cold. And, you know, altitude is no respecter of age or fitness. So even the guys who were carrying things up, they'd just be falling, you know, mm -hmm. they'll say, I've got to sit down now. So your days mm -hmm. were short, they were cold. Um, it was just very difficult to work, mm. but it was so phenomenally beautiful. Yeah, wasn't it? yeah, it really was. You know, yeah. I mean, you're on top of the world there. Yeah. You're above the cloud level. You're at, I think, nine and a half thousand feet. Yeah. Um, but you know, so we dug in there as if like an army would. You know, those are all the tents that are buried, and yeah. you know, the walkways that are dug out. And then after we finished, well, towards the end of shooting, the volcano. I think on the literally the last day the volcano did erupt and this is now buried under um <laughs> some of this and they got the crane off I think they but... got some of the crane off but all the scaffolding is buried underneath the lava we think that's yeah. going to be an interesting archaeological find yeah yeah so... and quite the insurance claim yeah yeah <laughs> yes and... uh, you see our techno crane was buried under lava yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I mean, I do think they got 
most of it off, but I just, you know, it's all a bit vague, shall we mm. say. So, yeah. And we, we work in such a glamorous business. That I know. <laughs> so so cool. hmm. Wow, that is incredible. Um, so can you talk a little bit about how you arrived at the colors in her apartment? Because it was just so luscious. Um, the blues, it was such a contrast from outside. And, and it just works so well. And she just popped in there. I mean, it was interesting. I mean, again, this was looking at all the locations in and around Noto and Joe instantly fell in love with this one, partly because of the blue, because one, one room had some of that blue fabric. And um, I mean, we know he loves blue from Pride and Prejudice and whatever. And, and also Haley's, Haley's um, uh, palette looked exquisite against that color so again this incredible um this incredible house just allowed us to to do what we wanted you know to kind of panel over a bit again not dissimilar to what we did on pride and prejudice but to panel over below there on the dado where we painted all the animals and you know katie recreated all the fabric which we had to then frame up and put against the walls and it told the story of Roxanne brilliantly, didn't it? With the, with the yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, the idea for that blue, again, it was that's why I was showing that picture of um, Hayley with her yeah. hair against even the corridor color to begin yeah. with. She obviously had to be the most dominant thing in the room. And I think she was. And the idea was that uh, we didn't want her to feel that she was this sort of wealthy woman who lived in this palazzo, but she lived just in these few rooms. She was on her last chance saloon, really. She had to marry now. She'd sold everything of any note in the apartment. Well, why, you know, why it's quite sparse and slightly out of fashion with the rest of the room because she just kept what was close to her. So, um, and the idea, I think, so to make all three rooms the same color, and the bed and the bed drapes and everything like this just gave a, a lovely cohe cohesive feel to it. And nurse stroke old nanny who she had to sleep in the dressing room next door, yep. you know? And so that was the only way it went somewhere else. And that was just full of dresses because yeah. she is vain, Roxanne. She yeah. is vain at the beginning. She'd rather have a dress than eat bread. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and go to the theater yeah. and she has this sort of like useful belief in, you know, love and yeah. all of that. Um, but also, I think the other thing that was a kind of, you know, stroke of, of genius from Katie was this idea of this is where you put the bed, you know, so the bed is in the middle room, the bed dominates the space, and it's so inappropriate. Mm -hmm. So if you think about the etiquette mm -hmm. of the society mm -hmm. in those days, you would not entertain a man anywhere near a bed, mm -hmm. you know, and it's this whole thing, she's fending off De Guiche, she's in mm -hmm. love with, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Christian, you know, it's, it's a kind of, it's like a big statement there, you know, and it's, it's, uh, it's trying, you know, it, it says it says uh, so much about her and her character, but also the look of the bed. Oh, the look of the bed. So this was in, when we were in London in the, in the, uh, in the early, in the early days. And Joe was saying, I want to, I want something that takes it out of the normal. This princess and the pea, the literal sort of story comes back and it seems to suit Roxanne completely. Um, and again, goes back to, so we, we had the, the frame of the bed, we knew it wanted, we wanted to use the same fabric that was on the walls. Then there was this whole birth of Venus love thing coming out of a shell. So brilliant sculptor sculpted that. And then that was flocked and in front of this gilded sort of, um, um, yeah, canvas leaf that would frame her hair and everything. And then the brilliant upholsterers who made everything else also made all these mattresses and at one point, the bed was going to be completely dressed with the sheets, but then the mattresses look so adorable. It's like, you know, she's always in the bed. She's always dancing in the bed. She's painting in the bed. She's doing whatever she wants in the bed. And so that is a focal point. But I remember when we first assembled it, and you know this, Jan, what well, looks great, and that's a great idea. And then before everything's put together and you walk in, and it's like this monumental bed, like it makes you take three steps back. Mm. And then you have to somehow have belief in it. And the brilliant thing about what we do is when Haley came on board, she just went for it. Mm. She went for it. And she's ba bouncing around oh, in it like Tigger. Wasn't and she? you know, yeah. then if they could make it work, Whatever, you, whatever set or whatever dressing mm. is in there, then you're, you're, you're on the right way. You're on the right way to go home. And she, yeah. you know, Joe loves to come in and play on the set. He loves sometimes just to sit there and, 
you know, and because Haley was there the whole time, she was in and out, bouncing around, singing. Um, so, and these letters, they just grew and grew and grew. Um, so the thousands of letters, a brilliant graphics team as well. We just have to say absolutely stunning, who are very clever and very character driven. Oh, the calligraphy, the letters were. Oh, the letters were great. And you know that we, we did this because of all the letters and all the deception and the sort of, you know, this is a letter from Serrano tending to be Christian coming back. You have to know each other. So uh, Alicia and Matilda, who are our graphics team, they, we were talking about it. We came up, how are we going to make them different? Well, she's going to sketch all over the letters because she loves to paint. She loves to draw. She's a romantic. And then we, you know, discover this, um, uh, we call them unfolding love letters. So they were like an origami. So every letter, we don't really see it in the film, but every letter that Roxanne sent unfolded into a drawing as well. And I think so much of what we do as story supporters, right, helps the actors. Mm -hmm. I love that she embraced it. I mean, she just, it, it, it all just looked like it was meant to be, you know, it was so perfect. I mean, what was interesting is, is keeping the whole film intimate and kind of almost claustrophobic in a way until we hit Etna where you, you're out like that, which is why, you know, we don't see, and I don't think we needed to see any of the countryside as such. You know, you don't need the tum to tum tum shots, you know, even though they would have been beautiful, but they didn't help tell the story. So, uh, yeah. I think, I think so. And also it makes Roxanne's life feel so contained. Yeah. And when you feel you're in this one town, her options are limited, you know? Yeah. So therefore, when the geese comes with his, she you can't know, escape. You can't escape. Yeah. 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 So. yeah, absolutely. I mean, she's confined, but but not in her mind. You yeah, know? Exactly. exactly. But when she actually ends up as in the in the uh, convent at the end, yeah. as well. but that was stunning as well. And the the scaffolding that you constructed was just so beautifully done. Actually, that was one of the bills we had to do at the eleventh hour. Was the the cloisters outside. From the moment that Joe said, let's go and shoot this, to when we shot, to when we finished, it was six months from start to finish. Oh my God. He yeah. said in June, we're gonna make Serrano, right? And literally the following week we're out there looking and then we finished shooting on the 19th of December and that was it. Six, oh. six months from start to finish. But you know, yeah. Sicily, I don't know whether you've been to Sicily, yeah. it's so, so beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. You know, and also because it was COVID, it was like going to Italy 50 years ago. Yeah. You know, so everything was notorious. Everything was, I mean, it was, I mean, to a T, everybody fell in love with it. No yeah. matter how stressful films get, it was so beautiful. Yeah. Um, no traffic. No, it was, nothing. it was amazing. Yeah. And we were like a little community, weren't we? Because nobody could come and see us. No, we couldn't leave. We couldn't leave. <laughs> so it was like you will get on, yeah. or or we all went a bit. We not. all went a bit feral. We did <laughs> the wine, yeah, in the evening, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank goodness for the wine, right? But yeah, you're the yeah. prison. Yeah. We'll stay here, and you will make a movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was a bit like was, that yeah. actually, but um, it was a joy. Yeah. It was an absolute joy, yeah. and I think that again, I think that shows on the film, you know that everybody was very it's very tight-knit and close-knit you know with the actors and it it works so you know i have to say that that balcony scene where he's giving the words to christian yeah oh my god it was it, it was just the right balance of you know i was crying and laughing at yeah. the same time and yeah. did you find that balcony as well or did you embellish there that that beautiful freeze on the freezes on each side so in fact, that balcony was kind of off her rooms, her three rooms, and we built a corridor inside another corridor. And in fact, you know, I mean, Noto itself was so full of the most beautiful balconies. But actually, the truth of it is, you don't want her to have the beautiful, the most beautiful balcony. You want her to have a balcony that tells the story. So she's at the back, she's over the stables, she hasn't got the money, she's got the back entrance. You know, so all of those things just, added up to the story of 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 her and where she was at in her life and and of course everything that happens around you know we like we like farm animals don't we, we do like a farm animal we do like an animal joe likes an animal joe likes an animal, <laughs> and, like it, an animal. and in sicily you've got some great animals yeah you? they're all local they're all very local yep. <laughs> um mm. but 
you know, and again, it just, you know, again, but this is where Joe is brilliant because he's not going in with a forced opinion. He's very much somebody who can, you know, look at a location or an idea and go, okay, that's great. Let's, let's move it. Let's manipulate it to work. And that's what he did with, with that location, you know, cause normally you'd think, oh, you'd be under the balcony, but actually his is so much better idea is to play that arch, oh, it's beautiful. you know, yeah. and, and to play the use of the darkness and everything. I mean, it's, mm. as you say, it was funny and poignant and sad and romantic. And so and, moving. And you yeah. so feel for Peter. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 Sarah and Katie, thank you so much. Um, it's just always a treat to speak with you. Um, this is your, uh, I don't know, millionth collaboration together. <laughs> it's, like it. such a labor of love. it's just wonderful. And uh, I just can't congratulate you enough. It was just, just brilliant. And thank you for sharing all of this with us. We really appreciate it. Take care. Bye bye. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Inside the Set with Setacore. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit our website, setacore.com. 